You always hear how exercise goes hand in hand with maintaining a healthy cardiovascular system. And as many athletes lead a healthy lifestyle, there is often an assumption that athletes and physically active people for that matter are not at risk of cardiac issues. However, athletes are not immune. Welcome to Healthy Living, wellness and prevention, medical innovation, the informed side of care. Welcome to Baptist Health Talk. Hi everybody, I'm Kendis Gibson coming to you from the Baptist Health Newsroom. Athletes can, however, suffer from heart-related health conditions at any point in their lives from the amateur marathon runner for that matter to professional athletes. Athletic activities can range from mild and for that matter, intense. And it's important for every type of athlete to stay on top of their health. With the biggest game of the year upon us, we brought in some of our own all-stars, or I guess it would be pro bowlers um, from Baptist Health family to discuss the athletes and their health risk. I'd like to welcome Dr. Eli Friedman, who's a medical director of sports cardiology at Miami Cardia Cardiac and Vascular Institute. And Dr. Alex Mefdali, Math Deli, uh, who is a primary care sports medicine physician at Baptist Health Orthopedic Care. Thank you both for uh, joining us. Really appreciate it. So, are you more all stars or pro bowlers when it comes to Baptist Health? He's in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the team. Yeah. Part of the team. Part that's the, team. that's the answer. All right. Before we dive into today's subject, I want to remind you guys that who were watching to send in your questions in the comments. We are here for you and happy to answer any questions that you might have on the topic. Dr. Friedman, let me start with you. What would you say is the best way for people who are training and conditioning for that matter um, for any athletic event to strengthen their heart health? So I think just simply doing the activity becomes the healthiest and best thing that they can do, right? Okay. So be clear, exercise is the healthiest and best thing that anybody can do for their overall health, be it body, body mind, or soul. So the more we get people doing this, the better. Um, you know, truly, if you're trying to get better and stronger, there's no secret, there's no magic pill. You just have to do the work and, and actually spend time doing it. So if you want to go longer and you want to go faster, well, then you have to go longer and you have to work on your, your speed as well. Um, but generally, uh, th there's no magic bullet just putting in the work, doing the time, and paying attention to your body, and Does that too. become a little bit more difficult going longer and harder as you age? Well, no, no. so age is a four-letter word. We, we never blame <laughs> anything on age, so uh, there, there's no reason why you can't get faster, stronger, speedier as you get older. So, wow. yeah, that, that's just the number. That's been my excuse. <laughs> Dr. Mustali. So people might be eager to kind of jump right into their exercise routine or other physical activity for that matter, but how important would you say are, you know, some proper warm-ups and cool-downs for injury prevention in athletes? Yeah, I really think those are paramount. You know, getting a proper warm-up technique um, can really benefit you going forward. You really don't want the body going from an atmosphere of too cold to too hot too soon. So progressively mm -hmm. getting loading your tendons and loading where you need to go um, can help maximize that you won't suffer an injury and different types of stretching exist. There's dynamic stretching, which is um, the more recommended type of stretching mm -hmm. that you would versus uh, static stretching, which is more of like muscles not moving and you trying to stay in one position um, yeah. will versus um, ballistic, which is more of the bouncing. We kind of err against that because that can probably propagate an injury more okay. quickly than the others. So I've been told that you shouldn't necessarily stretch before working out because it takes away from some of the energy. What is it important more to stretch after or before? So that's where I come into the dynamic. If you think of stretching and the, the different types of stretching, yeah. dynamic stretching involves the muscle moving in a, in a fine plane as opposed to you just statically stretching a muscle that could potentially, that wouldn't be doing the same as getting the movement that you want to, to try to mimic the type of activity you're going to be playing. Okay, Dr. Friedman, what would you say is considered, um, uh, when it comes to cardiovascular activity for that matter, um, a normal activity and how long should you get going? I've watched plenty of TikTok videos from, <laughs> from athletes. I'm not saying I get medical advice from there at all, but they say, oh, 20 minutes a day, you're good. Yeah, uh, so you don't get exercise from watching TikTok either, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So anything. I, I think the bar for exercise is, is too high sometimes. I, I think we make the, the level of entry too high. So you don't need to do CrossFit, don't need to run a marathon, don't need to cycle 100 miles to get the benefit of exercise. Okay. The, the definition of exercise is simply moving one's body with pur 
purpose for a sustained period in time. So if that's walking for five minutes a day, a couple of times a week, just to get comfort with, with that and, and to get in the flow, that, that's great. Ideally, it's 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week. That, that's being able to be conversational so you and I could go for a walk and talk just as we are right now. Uh, but anything, riding a bike, walking, swimming, yeah. jogging, jumping, dancing, mm -hmm. I mean, you name it, that is exercise as long as it's done with purpose and, and continuity for a couple of minutes there. So even if you, if you have like, you're monitoring your steps. Mm -hmm. Is there like a step number that? Yeah, I, I, I tell, to tell people not to get too scientific. Certainly, if we're okay. talking about elite athletes, there's different variables there. But you know, the more scientific you get with your watch and your heart rate, yeah. the, the higher the barrier is going to be. So just move, get out there, have fun, and listen to your body. Okay. Because I'll often tell my watch that I'm running, and then I go for a bike ride. Yeah, <laughs> feeling it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor McDally. <laughs> It counts. It, it counts. counts. Yeah, it uh, something. Counts. Yeah. What would you say, since we're talking about the big game, are the, some of the most common injuries for footballers or football players out there? I have to say lower extremity injuries, mm -hmm. uh, muscle, strain, or muscle strains for the most part, um, hamstring injuries, ankle sprains. I have to say this year definitely had a plethora of ankle sprains and you know that definitely there are different levels of types of sprains and how we create return to play protocols to get them back playing um, you know with contact sports you can definitely have injuries to your acrom your collarbone um, your shoulder your chest um, and hands too you know linemen are always putting their hands across and yeah. there's a lot of contact and sometimes they can get wrist sprains but for the most part i'd say lower extremity injuries strains are one of the most common flow of sports. and have you seen some of these injuries even with folks who are playing flag football or, or, or yeah such? really for sure okay. yeah um i'd say the ones that are playing flag football are probably on the younger aspect yeah. of it and have well i guess so too are the college athletes yeah. but um I think with the football, there's a lot of ligament with flag football. There's also ligamentous injuries, um, ACL, um, MCL injuries that are really taken into consideration. I oh, got it. So, Dr. Freeman, when it comes to what well, we've come really so far, when it comes to screening athletes, as you know, for cardiovascular problems and heart abnormalities, talk to us about how athletes are screened for heart issues. Yeah, nowadays. so the, the the basics out there are typically like the the pre-participation exam, which is like a history and physical. That that's just think of it as your annual checkup. You go in, you talk, you answer some questions, maybe check a form with, with yeses or nos. You get your heart listened to, get your blood pressure checked, those things. That, that's going to encompass pretty much the basics for most people. Um, Hopefully meeting with a provider at that point in time to go over some of those pertinent positives and negatives that you check as well. As you ascend through kind of the elite aspects of sport, depending on where one goes, that might include an electrocardiogram also, an ECG or an EKG, um, and sometimes even an echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart. Um, you know, there's a lot of debate surrounding the EKG and the electrocardiogram. Should that be done? Should we yeah. be mandating it? Should every single student athlete get one? So I'll pontificate a little bit here and say that I think it can be done, but that doesn't mean that it should or it must be done. It can absolutely show us things that are relevant to sport and in terms of the heart issues and diseases that can arise. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to save one's life by getting that and finding something. Yes. So I think it's important that if somebody is going to get an electrocardiogram as part of their pre-participation evaluation, that number one, the, the equipment is correct, that the, the test is done properly, it's interpreted properly by someone who knows what they're looking at. And then the follow-up, if there is a positive finding, meaning there's something that could be there, is done by somebody who's really familiar with the intersection of cardiac disease and sport yeah. because it's a very different level once you're talking about engaging the heart and vigorous exercise with underlying cardiovascular pathology. Is there something to, I mean, obviously we've seen some high profile incidents, incidents where um, star athletes, uh, uh, Damon Hamlin and, and, and for the Bills at 24 years old. Yeah, Bronny James at 18 years old. Both had um, cardiac arrest uh, at, at such a young age, and by all appearances, they're 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 very athletic people. Um, What's happening? Do you think in, in 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 when it comes to that? Is is it conditioning nowadays with athletes yeah, of today or what? So it, important for me to state: number one, I'm not involved in either of their yeah. care. Um, number two, both of them were screened intensely and multiple different times. Also, meaning they had electrocardiograms, echocardiograms, and everything came out just fine. Um, it, the tendency when you see these high-profile events like Demar Hamlin and, and LeBron James Jr. is to think that this is happening more frequently. It's not. In fact, it may be happening less frequently than it was prior. Um, 
Why does it happen? You know, there's a lot of different reasons, and we can get into the details on that if you'd like. But I think the more important story and the take home point to everybody is that they survived. Yeah. They got prompt CPR, they got prompt defibrillation with an AED, they had emergency action plans in place, and people knew what the heck to do when the bad thing happened. So I think that's the take home message that this is going to happen despite all of our best screenings, despite all of our efforts to understand our athletes. And really, as we talk about athletes, right? What did John Wooden used to say? Failure to prepare is preparing to fail. When we prepare for these bad things to happen and have the defibrillators, have the CPR training and the emergency action plans in place, that's where we save lives. Well, some of us are old enough to remember athletes on basketball courts dying from cardiac yep. arrest because they weren't pre-screened the way they are nowadays or have the treatment that we have nowadays. Yeah, and the emergency action exactly. plans in place, it wasn't recognized. So again, like people are getting screened and it still happens. It's not happening often or frequently. It's actually a very rare event, but it's the preparation that led to saving lives. Yeah, and good to know those guys are both recovering and they're back. But let's talk as far as, uh, Dr. Mathali, um, the importance of rest when it comes to recovery from an injury. Um, with that being said, what what's the safest way, you, would you say, to get back into fitness and sort of regain mobility after recovering from an injury? I say take the time and really listen to your body. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, an injury is a time that your body needs to stray away from the vigorous activity it was getting and really allow the time to recover, heal, work on your range of motion before you can start strengthening yeah. and really um, listen to how you're progressing instead of trying to get to the end result quicker. Usually the first thing that I get asked is, okay, when, they can, when can they get back to play? Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's really... You, there are certain timelines based off certain in injuries, but really listening to how an individualized approach and how that athlete can progress to getting back to where they were is really important to listening to the, how they get there. All right. What do you guys enjoy most about treating um, athletes when it comes to heart health or heart health? Dr. Yeah, so I, I think the, the most rewarding part of my job is teamwork. So I have the privilege of working with Dr. Moftali, and I've seen his career kind of go from being a fellow now now to being the head team physician for FAU. So that, that's pretty special. And we get to work. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, it's been it, instrumental it, it, in me getting to where uh, I'm at, too. So It's really that's true. Great. You know, like we get to work with really all-star athletic trainers, uh, physiotherapists, nutritionists, mental health experts. And that teamwork, you know, we, we use that in our daily practices. But when you're caring for elite athletes, yeah. it really is a team based sport and that interaction that teamwork to care for elite athletes really is is the best part of my job dr mcfally yeah i have to agree it's definitely the teamwork not only amongst the athletes themselves but the whole group of people taking care of these athletes um, from the complete spectrum mm -hmm. all trying to do the best for our athletes and get them back playing appropriately and safely you know and, you know, I'll just build on that for a okay. second. You know, I think a lot of people think that Dr. Mufdali is like the first call when an athlete has trouble. He's not. He's actually number call call number two or three. Okay. It's actually the athletic trainers okay. that are getting the phone calls. So they are the unsung heroes of sport. You talked about DeMar Hamlin. It was an athletic yeah. trainer who started CPR and put the AED wow. on. It was not the physician. Um, so, you know, athletic trainers, physiotherapists, they are the number one, two, and three when it comes to athlete care. Okay. Appreciate it. That's nice. Yeah. That's great to hear. Um, and see that camaraderie. Let's go ahead and answer some of the more top search questions that we see on the internet when it comes to this particular topic. Okay, one of them, if I have a heart abnormality, is it still possible for me to play sports? Yeah, um, unless you want to take that one. No, yeah. Yeah. okay, yeah, so 100%. Um, um, again, this goes back to what we were talking about with ECG screening. You really want somebody who's comfortable with the intersection of sport, the, the particular sport and the demands of the sport that you're participating in and your heart condition and, and understanding what needs to be done, uh, whether it's stress testing, additional imaging, further management or treatment before really getting back to that high intensity. So it's absolutely possible. We now are in an era where we're trying to get everybody playing as much as possible because we know how good it is, uh, but uh, with appropriate oversight, treatment, and safety. Amazing. Um, what is, maybe Dr. Mahdali, tell me if you can take this one, is the best exercise for the heart? Sitting around doing Grand Theft Auto? Doing what you hours. really, doing what you like, because that's going to okay. drive you, what's going to continue to get out there and continue that exercise. If you really dread going about doing a particular activity, I'd say find something you enjoy that's going to get that motivation mm -hmm. aspect to get you moving. How important would you guys both say that diet versus exercises? 
Yeah, um, they are complementary to one okay. another. Uh, there is the the connotation out there, the the notion that people think just because I'm burning lots of calories and moving and grooving on the treadmill or the elliptical that I can just go ahead and eat whatever I want. And there's nothing that undoes a good workout like a bad diet. So it's okay. really important that they complement one another. And I'll even throw a third thing in there, which is sleep. You know, poor sleep mm -hmm. habits, poor mm -hmm. recovery uh, is equally as bad as a bad diet and no exercise. Okay. Yeah, I really think the food is our building box of what making our muscles and. And actually, some of the when you get to the higher levels, there's certain there's in, nutritionists incorporated in creating diets for the athletes to yeah. sustain the needs that they need for the activity that they're playing. All right, you guys are both from Miami. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I would imagine then that you don't you don't have a horse in this race. Um, <laughs> Lions, San Francisco, Ravens, or Chiefs? <laughs> Who wins it? I, yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm just for good games and, you know, healthy outcomes at the end of it. Uh, we'll sit back and enjoy watching. It's unfortunate the Dolphins aren't there, uh, but hopefully next year. Okay. Agree. I'm just looking for a good game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. Great. <laughs> right. Basically, is what that answer was. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Um, it thank was a great you. conversation. We thank you thank for you sharing much. the insight with the audience, and it's great insight. Um, remember that you can um, be sure to hit the subscribe button on our channel here to keep up with the latest health and wellness information and tips from our experts. We thank you for watching. Find additional valuable health and wellness information on our resource blog at baptisthealth.net slash news. And be sure to interact with us on our social media channels for live and upcoming events. Baptist Health Talk is brought to you by Baptist Health, the warmer side of care.